Welcome to another Philly Gives Back. This episode is super special since we're highlighting two nonprofits who are actually partner organizations. Coming up, we get an insider look into Dancing Classrooms Philly as crew went to one of their programs and interviewed some students and staff. Then we are heading over to Musicopia, where we went to see one of their string orchestra rehearsals. And then we have an extended interview with the executive director of both nonprofits. Stay tuned. Welcome to Philly Gives Back. I'm your host, Hannah Balkowski, and today we will be highlighting two nonprofits that are supporting the Philadelphia community. The two nonprofits are partner organizations, Dancing Classrooms Philly and Musicopia. I love dancing, but am I good at it? No. Can I give you any tips? No. But Dancing Classrooms Philly can. This nonprofit works to provide all youth access to arts through dance programs. They offer a wide variety of programs, but our very own associate producer, Donnie Argo, and crew members Lucas Alvin and Maddie Geyer went to see one of DCP's ballroom dance rehearsals. Let's see some dancing. <laughs> So Dancing Classrooms Philly uh, is a um, nonprofit organization that works with kids um, through uh, kindergarten through 12th grade, and we teach uh, them ballroom dance. So uh, we have uh, teaching artists that are specially trained to work with uh, children, and they go through a training to um, uh, learn the syllabus that's been developed in New York by uh, Dancing Classrooms Global and they, we go into the, the school and um, we work with kids for 20 lessons and they learn different types of dances and then at the end they have a big show for the school. For, for our organization, dancing is just um, like a small part of it, of the program. It's just something for the children to um, learn to do as a new kind of skill, but um, dancing is not the main focus. Uh, through dancing, we uh, uh, give the children opportunity to work together um, because they have to dance in a dance ring. They have to hold each other, especially in fifth grade. They don't want to do it, and they think it's the, the most scariest thing ever. But it gives them the opportunity to um, feel and, and, and start learning how to work together, even though you, don't, you might not want to work with that person. Um, and uh, it gives them uh, something to be proud of at the end when they get to perform it. So there are a lot of different skills that they learn through that program. Dance was always kind of like a pressure reliever for me. It was great to have a place where like I had friends and it was kind of, it wasn't a huge group, so we knew each other and we got to have fun with each other. So coming here is like, I get to meet up with friends and I get to look cool and do cool things while I do. I love it when we learn new dances because you know, you, you never you never think you can always get cooler, but then the moves come out, and then it's like, oh, yo, that's awesome. And like just being able to learn that and successfully do it consistently is just such a great feeling to have. Um, so the most popular is the ballroom program. It's the most flashed out program. It's before the pandemic. It was our only program that we offered, and it's the the long twenty lesson program where at the end children get to perform. Um, the other programs, we just started working on them and um, offering them after pandemic, so they're just they're still in kind of development phase. Um, but the the twenty lesson program, um, we they get to learn the most dances, they get to kind of experience the most of the, what we offer, and then um, they also have a big a big uh, event at the end of the school year where they, the schools that participate come together and they perform for our guests, and then they also have a competition. Um, one thing, well, one of the th things uh, the, that's uh, especially happening in public schools, a lot of art programs are getting cut, um, and there are schools that have no arts at all. Their their music teachers, uh, you know, 
know, for whatever reasons, could not stay. Um, and uh, dancing is uh, is is it's it it provides many um, many I don't know opportunities for the students to to kind of get get up and move, um, express themselves. Um, maybe even even if they don't like dancing, there are a lot of uh, things that we do besides dancing during our program they, where, where they have get to learn about different um, cultures and work on different projects. So there's a lot of uh, stuff that's involved in the program, not just dancing. So I think it's it's it has a variety of things for the students to explore. It's fun to watch them, uh, you know learn these new things and that they've never done before and try to dance together so i like i think the most uh, my favorite thing is to like uh, experience those initials initial emotions that students uh, have i'm sad we didn't get to see donnie dancing but did you see those moves? I for one think dance is a wonderful way to express yourself and it's fun. What kid doesn't like fun? To hear more about these dance programs, be sure to check out their website at dancingclassroomsphilly.org. I don't know about you, but I love this musical rhythmic vibe we've got going on our show today. So let's keep these vibes going with our second nonprofit, Musicopia. They strive to provide access to music education and enrichment for all youth. I went to one of their string orchestra rehearsals with crew members Patrick O'Hara and Caitlin Ramos. We were blown away by both the instructors and the students. My musical knowledge is a few years playing piano and I have nothing to show for it, but these kids, just wow. Check it out. Hello everyone, and this week on Philly Gives Back, we are at the First Unitarian Church, where today we are going to be joining Musicopia to hear some of their phenomenal tunes. Whether you're listening to it or playing it, music plays an important part in many of our lives. But sometimes aspiring musicians or children who just want to get some musical experience don't always have access to music programming. Musicopia is a nonprofit that helps students explore music through developing musical skills, learning about the different styles and types of music, as well as empowering youth to perform with confidence. Musicopia offers so many programs for students to gain musical experience and knowledge, but we were able to sit in on one of their Musicopia string orchestra rehearsals. Musicopia String Orchestra is also known as MSO and was founded in 2005. This program in particular has three levels of ensemble. These include Musicopia Young String Players, Musicopia String Orchestra, and Musicopia Chamber Orchestra. The MSO ensemble allows students to not only expand their instrumental and musical talents, but also allows them to gain experience in discipline and teamwork. Every Tuesday at the First Unitarian Church of Philadelphia, students rehearse with amazing faculty and instructors who are not only passionate about music, but are incredible teachers who really prepare the students for their performances and future. You need to be very, very, very careful when you practice. Because if you practice something the wrong way, what you are doing is you are building into your muscle memory the wrong way. You can't the instructors really take the time to help the students get the right note, provide some tips, and just let the students have a good time. The rehearsal is broken up into two halves, and there's a snack break where the kids get to socialize before getting right back to it. The MSO program is open for students in all types of schools, private, public, charter, homeschooled, you name it. MSO also offers financial aid for students. To qualify, students can audition before each season. They also have transportation options available to help assist students and their families in receiving music education. 
Students involved with MSO also form an outreach chamber ensemble called Extet. The Extet performs all around the Philly area at various events, and they are widely celebrated. For some, music is just music. For others, music is a hobby, a lifestyle, or even a career path. You can see students who participate in Musicopia's string orchestra are thriving in what they are taught. The focus, drive, and enjoyment from each student shows just how important music education is to the youth. And Musicopia is a wonderful organization that truly fosters that importance. We have such a great time here at Musicopia, and if you want to learn more, go to musicopia.net. Now back to Hannah in the studio. I told you they were good. My favorite part of the rehearsal was how engaged the students were. I mean, they were taking notes and asking questions. It was just a sweet moment to see kids so excited about music. So, Musicopia and Dancing Classrooms Philly are partner organizations and have the same executive director, Catherine Charlton, who we actually have in studio today. Thank you so much for joining us. It's my pleasure. I'm so excited to talk about both these great organizations, but I think we'll start with Musicopia. So we heard a little bit about it, but can you elaborate on the mission and the history of the organization? Yes, so Musicopia was founded in the early 1970s, actually. We're approaching our 50th anniversary, oh, wow. which is amazing. It was founded by a string quartet of all women who saw that the arts budgets were being cut in the schools and wanted to help and wanted to do something about it. So they started the organization, it was called Strings for Schools at the time, and they would bring their string quartet into schools that were, um, did not have music programs and offer assembly programs and teach the kids about music. And then it grew from there through the years. Um, so now we have um, a roster of um, over 150 teaching artists representing musics from around the globe. It's very exciting. Yeah, that's amazing. And so there's a lot of different programs that you have, yeah. and we kind of covered a little bit about the string orchestra, but can you tell us about all the other ones that you offer? Yeah, so we're in over 100 schools each year, and our, I mentioned our global roster mm -hmm. of musicians. We're bringing in programs from around the world, uh, Bollywood dancing, Afro-Cuban dance, um, uh, Middle Eastern music, the list goes on and on. Um, and the musicians are all professional musicians. They'll come and perform in the school and then they'll take small groups of students and work with them to learn more about that music. And then the students get the opportunity to perform in the schools uh, for That's all of their awesome. friends and, and um, their teachers and community. Um, that's an example of our in-school residency programs. Okay. Um, we also will send teachers into a school for um, instrumental coaching to do um, band programs or to learn string instruments in the schools, for example. Our after-school programs include the orchestra, which draws from 30 different schools across the city, and our drum lines program. We have 13 and growing um, after-school drum lines uh, where the students are learning percussion um, in groups and performing and um, really learning about teamwork. Um, we also have our instrument donation program mm -hmm. where we have site drop-off locations around the region and we are collecting donated instruments, repairing them, and then if they're needed, and then placing them with schools and teachers who might not have those um, instruments otherwise. Awesome. So can you tell us a little bit more about that donation program? So like, what's the process like? How does it work? Yeah, so if um, you have an instrument, perhaps your child um, played an instrument in middle school and hasn't touched it in years, or um, we have people who ha have played the instruments themselves and realize that they're not playing it as much anymore, and um, it can be a very personal um, attachment to the story of that instrument. Um, but we have so many young people across our region who want to play and want to learn but might not be able to um, rent an instrument or buy it otherwise. Um, so you can go to our website, fill out a form um, telling us about the instrument, um, and then drop it off at one of our locations. Uh, we will pick it up and assess it, um, repair it if it needs, and then we'll 
get it right into the hands of a student who wants to play. That's amazing. Is there any particular instrument that you guys need like more of rather than something else? Uh, we're always looking for string instruments and band instruments. Um, uh, flutes tend to be very popular, things that kids can stick in their backpacks and carry, um, but truly any orchestra or band instrument. Um, and I mentioned the drum lines, percussion, drum sets. Um, we have a lot of modern band programs, so electric guitars, guitars. <laughs> all the fun stuff. Yeah, all the fun <laughs> stuff. Everything like that. And so your instructors, they use FAME coaching. What, can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, sure. FAME is our acronym for Fostering Artistic and Musical Excellence. Um, so that's the name that we give to the programs where it's long-term coaching, where the students are learning uh, about an instrument or singing um, over the course of time where they can really perfect something and learn it, and it's a lifetime pursuit. And so those instructors, how do they find, you know, Musicopia? How, how do you guys get in contact? I think that the, while it's large, the network of musicians in our city and our region is, is very connected. And I think a lot of these musicians work for multiple organizations in the city, or sometimes we have um, school district of Philadelphia teachers who are teaching in the classroom during the daytime, and then they'll uh, come work with us in our after school programs. Um, so it's a lot of word of mouth, it's posting it, but uh, again, it's, it's really the interconnectedness of all of the education organizations in the city. Right. And so you said that there's lots of in-school programming. How do schools, you know, connect with you to have those programs? Um, it's a combination of things. We do have 12 schools that are in our Adopt-A-School network. So those particular schools we've been with for many years and we um, give the principals a uh, roster of uh, programs that they can select from and, and we're really supplementing their program in a more strategic way. Um, that program has lead support from the William Penn Foundation. Um, so those schools are um, on a specific um, partnership list. Uh, but then other schools, it might be word of mouth from principals. It might be sometimes the school districts. We work in nine different school districts. Sometimes the school district will say, we know this particular school uh, needs a program. Would you consider coming in? Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's our, our, don our donors and our funders who are particularly interested in a school. It might be their, the school that they graduated from, and they want to make sure that music continues in it long term. And so they are coming to us and saying, can you please make sure that this program continues? Um, and here I will help fund the musician to go in. Yeah. And so you mentioned the, um, some of the in-school programming you have, but what are some other examples? I've seen some on your Instagram. They're like, just seems so fun. What are some of um, those? Bucket drumming, <laughs> um, voices. Um, you're quizzing me now. So <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> there's like, over, <laughs> um, over 30 different <laughs> programs. Um, we have, I mentioned the Bollywood dancing, um, um, music, folkloric music from Mexico, uh, recycled sounds where those kids get to make their own instruments. The list really does go on and on. Yeah, and I think that's so cool that there's like the cultural element too, to music. And I think some, that's something that a lot of people kind of don't focus on as much when they're, you know, looking at music. It's more about like, oh, I'm gonna play a violin and things like that. Right, well the global awareness is a core part of our mission. And that's something that we have always done through the years. It was something that the original founders realized was a need and started moving in that direction pretty early on in the organization. And it's something that global roster of musicians, we've really been focusing on the past few years mm -hmm. um, to make sure that the students are not only experiencing uh, music and dance from their communities and what their parents and grandparents are sharing with them, but also to um, have their eyes opened and realize that there's this whole world that they can experience. Yeah, I think that's amazing. And so I was, we covered this a little bit in the package video, but the transportation, you guys offer like a transportation for students to get to rehearsals. Can you tell us a little bit about yeah. that? Yeah, so um, in January 2020, we acquired the Musicopia Big Red Van, <laughs> and that's what we call it. You might see it around the city. It's bright red and has students, uh, pictures of smiling students with their instruments. Um, but yes, we use it primarily with our string orchestra rehearsal, mm -hmm. and we're picking up students from their schools, bringing them to rehearsal, and then getting them um, back safely after rehearsal. We also use it to transport our instruments around the city um, and to take students to performances. 
um, I really see that as an area of um, strategic growth and opportunity for yeah. us to expand those offerings. Definitely. And so you mentioned performances. What are some of the performances like that happen in a year? What kind of things do students pr put on? Well, we have uh, the orchestra that you saw has mm -hmm. um, two main concerts a year, and then we have a smaller group um, that is our outreach group that is performing at um, fundraisers and festivals and, and really getting that experience of being a gigging musician, right? Mm -hmm. um, we have our drum lines are performing in parades and at their schools mm -hmm. and at um, gala openings and mm -hmm. um, festivals on the street. Um, we have then all of the in-school programs um, very typically have a end of residency performance where I mentioned they're performing for their friends and their families. Yeah. Um, and we also are starting to uh, share our professional roster even more with community performances where we're bringing our artists into um, community partners. Um, at various museums in the area, libraries, community centers, where the whole community, not just the school, um, is getting access to this world music. Yeah, that's amazing, lots of fun stuff. Yeah. And so Dancing Classrooms Philly is a partner organization with Musicopia. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of, kind of transitioned to there, but what is their role together? Like, do they do any events together? What's that kind of partnership? Sure, yeah, the, the missions are very closely related mm -hmm. and we have, do have a shared vision. Uh, where it really is about transforming and enriching communities for all children through the arts. And it's using the arts as a tool to experience self-confidence, self-esteem, uh, dedication, um, teamwork. And uh, the, there's nuances on how the dance helps the ch students through that journey and how the music does, but it's still in the end of the day, it's the same uh, wanting to elevate students and um, have them open to new experiences. So the organizations, while it's a different vehicle that we're using, um, it's, it's the same idea where we're sending teachers into the schools. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember the original part of the question. I get so excited about it. <laughs> no, that's fine. I, you know, I don't. I don't either. But I wanted to talk about the programs that dancing classrooms. You know, they have so many, and we saw the ballroom dancing. Yeah. But what are some of the other ones? Yeah, so uh, Dancing Classrooms Philly, the original uh, and our flagship program is a ballroom dancing residency where the students, um, it's usually either fifth grade or eighth grade because those are very transformational mm -hmm. years where the, the students are going through um, large transitions or graduating um, from elementary to middle school, for example, middle school to high school. Um, and that connection that they are making with their classmates um, is really um, transformational in that experience that they're all going through that together. Mm -hmm. So they're learning um, things out of their comfort zone. They're learning how to have eye contact with each other. They're learning how to touch their classmates. Um, they're learning how to uh, work together to create this art. So the ballroom truly is our core program. Over the past couple of years, we've expanded our mission to include social dance, um, but still getting that eye contact, that uh, community. So we're doing hip hop and K-pop and salsa and Latin dances, um, but really all with the same mission of that connection and that teamwork and that journey. Right, that's so exciting. All those different dances, it's complicated. It's yeah. definitely complicated to learn those. So what are the volunteer and donation opportunities like for both of these organizations? So we're always looking for volunteers and anything from um, administrative help to helping with events to transporting instruments. Really, the list is endless and it's whatever your particular skill set is and how you think you might want to help. We're always open to ideas. Mm -hmm. There's a volunteer sign up form on both of our websites, musicopia.net, danceclassroomsphilly.org. Um, and donations, the same thing. Any amount helps. You know, $5 helps. Uh, towards the cost of repairing an instrument. Um, you know, $100 would help tuition for a student in the Dancing Classrooms Philly Saturday Academy. Um, and then of course more helps with getting an entire school a program, yeah. right? The list really is endless. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, you can always, always do more and things like that. So what is your personal favorite part about both these organizations? Oh, it's the student performances. 
and not just the performances, the rehearsals. Um, we were chatting earlier, and you mentioned the focus of one of the students, you know, taking the notes. Yeah, it, it's the, the sheer joy. Um, one of my favorite days of the year is a Dance in Classrooms Philly um, culminating event where the students are elegant and dressed up and so proud of what they've learned and family and friends are cheering them on mm -hmm. and they're dancing the foxtrot and the tango and the merengue. Right? Um, it's very exciting. It's just a sweet environment. And I was looking at lots of, you know, the social media posts that you have, and there's just so many fun, fun little things going on there. Um, you know, I think one of the most important parts about the arts is, you know, the access to it. And I think that's why organizations like yours are really important to have. Can you just talk really quickly about, you know, why these are so important? Because as humans, we all just want to be heard and the arts help with that expression. It helps giving a safe space to know that it's okay to express yourself from within, to share your personal stories, and also know how to listen and hear each other's stories. Right. And hearing those stories is one of the most important parts of you know, just anyone's life. And getting to have that social interaction too, I think, with the students, you know, having a community is really important. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you so much. I had such a great time talking to you. Thank you. <laughs> and my favorite part about my growing up was all the fun music and arts activities that I had access to, and I'm very lucky for that. Organizations like Musicopia and Dancing Classrooms Philly really help everyone get those amazing experiences. And if you want to check them out, you can head to the World Wide Web at musicopia.net and dancingclassroomsphilly.org. And a huge thank you to Catherine for sharing more about both DCP and Musicopia. We got a lot of info on these two wonderful organizations. Thanks to both Dancing Classrooms Philly and Musicopia for sharing their time and knowledge. It's organizations like these that really make Philadelphia the city of brotherly love. And if you want to see some behind the scenes of Philly Gives Back, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Philly Gives Back LTV. For LTV's Philly Gives Back, I'm Hannah Belkowski, and we'll see you next time.